Just a couple of minutes away from the second quarter of this uh, AFL non-selected trial. Port Adelaide, of course, against the Crows in a you know, at a beautiful Albert and Oval. God, what a, what a, what a time to be alive, Tommy and, and Lee. My name's Daniel Norton, Tom Wren, and, of course, Lee Gaskin, Chief AFL reporter, joining us, talking us through this uh, first quarter of football. Some of the best players, Lee. I think Sam Berry's had a bit of the football, and uh, I've liked Strawn's work in Ruck. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. I think Sam Berry's been outstanding. Uh, Mitch Hinge has got a bit of it in his first game since coming across from Brisbane. Uh, had a dislocated shoulder in the preseason, so good to see him getting a lot of footy there. And I think pedler has been good too, who uh, I might have mistaken a couple of times out there. Nords, he's been very, very good. Second quarter action here from Albert and Oval. Yeah, I thought Port, from a Port Adelaide perspective, that should be in the back and will be, a, uh, umpire says, ball up. From a Port Adelaide perspective, Jake Wiedemann has been uh, the son of the gun. Son of Wayne Wiedemann has been really, really impressive. And... Um, Woodcock tries to grab the ball. Umpire says that is holding the ball. In fact, uh, that will go to Woodcock centre field. So he plays on quickly with that new rule allowing that to happen. So he's got a little bit of space. Pitches towards Schofield. Good hands. Good gather. Well played, young man. Towards Mead. Mead goes wider towards Westbrook. Westbrook tries to gather the football for Port Adelaide in front of the bowling club there. But well done for the Crows. Drop the footy. Umpire will say that's holding the ball. That's red hot. That is red hot. You go in yep. and get the footy. And the free kick goes to Woodcock with the platinum blonde hair. Kicks inside 50 for Port Adelaide. Again, a big pack of players as expected. Crumb down towards Mays. Mays kicks it high. Very high. And that will be spoiled through. Well played there by the Crows defender who uh, just escaped me there, but geez, he kept his eye on the ball and did very, very well. Uh, Lee, Port Adelaide just controlling that first passage. Yeah, beautiful um, aggression there and good tackling, reward of the free kick. And yeah, Boyd Woodcock has really hit the hairdresser's studio in the last week or so, hasn't he? That's uh, <laughs> some nice locks there. You're not going to mistake him. And that was Clamp there. And now New Church, who gives it off to Berry. That was nicely done by New Church initially. And then by Berry, who went forward. And a good mark taken overhead there by Clark, who's done a couple of really nice things. One of the top-up players. Short kick to Pedler. Pedler just that raking long left foot. Beautiful kick inside 50. Lean it in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Does well. Gets the ball away. That was nicely done. Pessini, who's had his injury problems over the years, kicks it around the body towards the boundary line. He'll be happy to find it. He does. And seeing it out there in the end was young Ollie Lord. Done a couple of good things, Ollie Lord, yep. in the first quarter. Just a, just a, You get a couple of glimpses, don't you, of, of what the talent can do. And Pessini comes with great raps. Um, from Western Australia, and uh, I know Ken Hinkley's a big fan of Pacini's as well. I think he started well. He certainly has. And you're right about Lord. I mean, there's talent in that family. Grandfather, a Brownlow medalist, as the umpire now tosses the ball back into play. Five points the margin. Gee, that was nicely done. That was very nicely done there by Tars Schofield. Speaking of talent in the family, the dad, of course, premiership player with the power. Here's Sam Hayes. He was really good early, wasn't he? A couple of nice taps. And a short kick on this occasion. That's barely the 15, but the umpire says that's OK. He'll be looking for an opportunity this year. Hayes, of course, um, a dual All-Australian junior. Um, so, you know, great talent, great um, raps on him. He just needs to get his opportunity. The ball goes forward towards the Port Adelaide 15-metre line. Well done there by Clark. Clark stood good. up in the tackle, did really well. The Crows almost off to shin that ball towards uh, the boundary line. I doubt the umpire will call that deliberate. That'll be a boundary throw-in. And uh, right in front of the Dad's Army Bar there on the eastern side of the ground. But, yeah, Clark has been good. Just some interesting signs there from sort of some players that you don't often see, contracted players, top-up players. It's really good to see them get this opportunity. Well, obviously having the Crows and Port Adelaide back in the sandfall this year, Norts, you're going to see those top-up guys get a run around. And it looks like a lot of them are up to the level, which is great to see. It's a boundary throw-in. May Strawn, Strawn gets it down towards Sutcliffe. Well done, though, there by the Port Adelaide player in Mays trying to get the ball off the carpet. Goes Sutcliffe, who's in front. Good spoil. Ball comes wide towards Davis. He puts his body over the line. Mays crashes in. Well done there by Sutcliffe. Kicks inside 50. You are just talking about the incident behind play where you yep. thought um, the head went over the ball. Meanwhile, the ball's gone forward. Quick soccer off the carpet there by the Port Adelaide player in Ben Edwards, but it goes through for a point. So... Just uh, Davis just uh, got crunched in a tackle. He did, and I just saw his face as he went down. It looked like he oh. sort of got the ankle pulled back the wrong way, and I reckon we're going to get a break in play here. He looked like he was in a fair bit of pain, Ben Davis, so not good to see. It's just on the half-back line. Now, the umpires allowed play to go on. This kick's going to go right towards where he is at the moment. Going up there was Hayes, and on the second attempt, takes a really good mark. Now, just to the left of Hayes. Yeah, probably on that left leg, isn't he? Yeah, we'll get a look at Benny Davis in just a moment. He's in a pretty bad way. He's hobbling, and he might need some assistance. You can just see him coming through the shot now. 
So Ben Davis, who has had a haircut and he's been playing across half back today, done a couple of nice things, looking a bit more uh, better on his feet now, but it's yeah, that might be his day done, unfortunately. Yeah, he, he seems to be getting a little bit of momentum. You can't see it on screen at the moment, but um, he's just making his way off the ground now. So the umpire has given the ball back and Port Adelaide go forward through Strange. So Strange on the left foot punches it towards that uh, half-forward region. Crows players there just trying to clear it. In goes Sutcliffe. Port Adelaide surrounding the ball down there in that forward pocket. Gee, there's a lot of players. Sutcliffe grabs the ball. Now tries to find some space. He's hemmed into the pocket and thrown over for a boundary throw-in. So just looking at Davis, he's just uh, nearly Looks over. Looks a bit better. A, a little he's bit better. He's walking off, yeah. It was just that initial um, impact that really stunned him first, but then obviously the you know the ankle doesn't look you know doesn't look great from the first um, sight there. So hopefully it's not too bad. Yeah, hopefully just a little roll or maybe even a slight sprain. Nothing too serious. He was walking off unassisted as Aldridge has a shot towards goal. Ball just drifting across the face off hands. Crows should tidy up here and rush it through. They do, and another behind. So the power just doing it in points at the moment. One six twelve now. The Crows 2-3-15, three, three points the margin, and we've gone almost six minutes in this second term. Pleasure to be with you, part of this uh, double-header stream from Albert and Noble. Daniel Norton, Lee Gaskin, and Tommy Wren, fresh from the Australian Open. What a magnificent <laughs> job you did then. Talk about going from bald lollies to scorch almonds. You've gone for the Australian Open to this, which is the big deal. This is the big 100%. one. 100%. It's pretty hard calling from two people to 44. It's, um, it's a lot different, but a lot of fun nonetheless. So the ball goes forward for Port Adelaide. Well played there by the Crows. They're just trying to work it through, but Sutcliffe had a lot of the football in close. Mays around the body. Was it touched? It was mm. by Borlays in the goal square, and that goal umpire signals are behind. So let's just take a check-in on that score. Port Adelaide won 7-13. The Crows leading by two points, 2-3-15. Two, a lot of those points, so Lee sort of rushed or touched on the goal line. Yeah, just, I suppose, having some rush shots around goal. But Sam May is just a very reliable player, isn't he, Norts? We saw him in, get a few um, opportunities last year yep. and never really lets the side down. Just a very solid guy to have at your club. Played nearly 100 games, of course, at the Lions. Uh, I might have just got to 100 games at the Lions and, and recruited by Port Adelaide a couple of years ago. So the ball goes towards halfback. Lean, it's sort of hovering at the back. The ball won't get that far. Strawn tries to work it through. He's wrapped up in a tackle there by... Lean it. Umpire sort of dancing, waving the hands in the air, looking for the ball to come out. And the umpire finally says, I will have it at uh, left half forward for Port Adelaide. So umpire tosses it up. It was Josh Worrell who brought the ball back with that thumping left foot kick to get it here. And now again, we get some bodies on top of it. Ball comes out to lean it, tries to get around the tackler. Couldn't do so, but still got the hands free. Now Suckliff puts it inside 50. Not oh. a bad kick. Oh, it was good. But unfortunately, the mark not taken. And now picked up by Taylor who goes out towards centre wing. He's just dribbled the kick out there. Again, we're going to get a ball up here, I think. Westbrook putting on a strong tackle. And, in fact, the umpire said that's holding the ball. So, pretty hot on it there. And they'll get a free kick here, Port Adelaide. So, a chance now to go forward. It might even be strange. Just couldn't quite pick up the number. They go inside 50 and a good intercept mark taken here by Adelaide. So, pretty scrappy play just to start this second term, though. Side really able to take full advantage just at the moment, but we'll see what the Crows can do on this occasion. I think that might be Taylor, who's taken the mark. Looks to go forward now, up towards the half-forward flank. Himmelberg is there, but the ball bounces well before him, and we'll get a boundary throw in. It's been a bit scrappy, hasn't it? Um, you know, it hasn't set the world on fire this quarter. We're eight minutes in, and uh, no goal to either side. But, um, but the Crows sort of... You know, you, you, you would think with the, I guess, with the weaker side, there's a lot of bigger Port Adelaide players out there, but really holding yep. their own at the moment. They uh, are. Lee, particularly around the football. I've been impressed, though, with Sutcliffe. He's uh, like a man possessed in this quarter, and um, just keep an eye on him. He'll be leading the Magpies this year. So the ball goes forward for the Crows. Pessini up against Himmelberg. Well spoiled there by Pessini, and uh, the ball goes towards the, the Bob Quinn stand. Had the pleasure of uh, watching the Bob Quinn premiere documentary last night um, it, it'll be released uh, to the public in the next few weeks magnificent Bob Quinn what a magnificent war oh. hero and uh, two time McGarry medalist and military medalist of course for this country so boundary throw in Hayes versus Strawn Strawn gets the ball down 
Here's a chance for the Crows. Only goes as far as Garner. Garner's got to get rid of the football. Now kicks into space. Serene versus, well, it's a three on two now. Port Adelaide players coming to try and help. That socket off the carpet there. Umpire says, I'm going to pay that deliberate. Ooh. Oh, boy. Well, I thought that might have been an accident. Yeah, but that's a tough one, Norts. But it's good to see uh, Tommy Wren's boy, Mitch Hinge, put some good pressure on there and really get amongst it. So, uh, look, yeah, a bit of a tough call there for Port. But uh, let's see what the Crows can do with this, uh, this kick. I think it's Taylor, yeah, and he's going to have a chance to get him up towards attacking 50. Having a big run and jump at it there was Sam Berry. Frederick, though, does well, butters it up. Now Serene, he's tackled immediately and just buffeted it over the boundary line and a little bit of push and shove to go on afterwards here. So it was a strong tackle. I don't think there was anything really that malicious in it, but maybe just unhappy with the treatment. And the umpire says... I don't mind that. Frederick coming in saying... Bit of feeling. No, 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 no. We're, uh, yeah, we're Sam, playing for keeps here. Sam Berry and Jack Strange there. A little bit off the ball. And Cam Suckliff standing up for his teammates as well. So the umpire tosses it back in. Hayes wins the tap down, but only gets it there as far as Hinge, who went after the football. Now they get the handball out. It was coming in the direction there of Bacanello, who goes inside 50, looking for a mark. Not able to find one. Garner picks up the football now. He's played a little bit of senior football as well. Phil thought there with him, lean it, goes one way, then the other goes back to Garner. Oh, they might have mucked this up here. And now the Crows are able to win the ball back. Scrappy stuff, but it comes out to Himmelberg, who throws it on the right boot. Big high up and under towards the goal square and a good mark. Running back with the flight of the football taken by Serene, and the power should have a chance to clear. Yeah, he looks like a likely prospect, Serene. Really composed under that ball. So Suckliffe handballs to Strange. Strange on that left foot. Chips towards Williams and he'll mark centre wing. So he'll just hold it up. Looking for some options up the field. They're all one-on-ones. Now Strawn's pushing back in that hole. So he's going to have to try and measure this. He goes towards that pack of players. Strawn's there. Big fist. Well crumbed there by the Adelaide Crow. And he'll get a free kick there. Cop one a little bit high there. And uh, number 30, did we find out who number 30 was? Yes, I know it's you're... Hamish Latchford, who was originally listed as number 51, but Hamish Lash Latchford is so number 30. Latchford will take the free kick here for the Crows. Cop one a little bit high. So half back, Adelaide looking to uh, hit the scoreboard this quarter, of course. Uh, no one scored a goal, so Ace Taylor's got it. Oh, short, oh. that's dangerous. Uh, and then Suckliffe overruns it, so not one for the... Uh, Highlights real, I can tell you there. The Crows push it forward, and the umpire says that'll go downfield. And Suckliffe, just a little bit of heat here. I mean, this is Port the Crows. You wouldn't expect anything else, would we? Good to see, isn't it? You know, yeah, absolutely. And just blowing out a few cobwebs, a bit of frustration. And that's what you want from senior players, isn't it? You know, just to indicate this is a, a serious game of football. We we want, you know, to, you guys to put in the, the full effort. I mean, now, Lee, you're these, a guys, these guys would be almost sick of seeing each other. They played, you know, obviously a few exhibition games last year, the guys who weren't picked in the AFL team, and next week I'm sure they'll probably go at it again. You're a student of the game, Lee. Strawn got the legs here from 48. Uh, he's a ruckman nought, so I'm, uh, I've got a bet against him, unfortunately. Oh, I'm going to go for him. My man Strawn goes inside 50, puts it on its way. I've backed him in. He's got the distance, but he's just hooked it, just going for that extra distance for a minor score. He's, so a, the, he's a classic ruckman, North. So, you know, you don't put him in front of goals more than 30 out. Yeah, well, tell Brendan Lay that. <laughs> <laughs> 2 4 16, the Crows, the Power 1 7 13. Uh, t shirt, Tommy Wren. He's, take it away. Jared Leanett, he is a thumping kick. He doesn't struggle with distance and he kicks it long, but, oh, that's a great grab. Fantastic. Ball yeah. ace. Ball ace, that's what they want to see. Just a little bit, and again, we see this infringement rule. But James Ball ace had a tough time probably in the opening 10 or 15 minutes against Wiedemann, but he steadied nicely and now has a chance to get on the scoreboard himself. He's had a couple of nice plays, hasn't he? It was a good spoil, I think, earlier on in the game, and now he's, well, should be able to capitalise on this opportunity to uh, get the Crows their third goal of the day. His dad would know nearly every single blade of grass here at Albert and Oval, of course, former Port Adelaide Premiership captain, and... See whether, he's, uh, whether his son can kick his first goal. He's played a bit forward in juniors, a lot in defence, though. He comes in from about 30 metres out and he pops it through. So well done there for young James Borlace. And that's the Crows' third goal for the morning. 13 and a half minutes into this second term. They open up again, a bit of a handy buffer. Nine-point lead now, so Borlace. That was a really good contested mark. I think that's what will please Crows fans more than anything. Good, strong stuff from the... Drafty from just last year, and you can see he's got a really nice size about him, Lee. He's going to be a player that 
I think he's going to play a lot of senior football down the track. Yeah, obviously Port Adelaide would love to have him at the club, but, you know, the uh, next generation academy rules is uh, born in Egypt and so falls into the Crows category and... Uh, <coughs> Yeah, really exciting prospect to pick up as a rookie. Of course, a double header from Alberton today. We're, we're broadcasting from the Port Adelaide headquarters side, and we can see Connor Rosie. He looks very comfortable in there. He's playing today. Well, that's there was good a because there was a bit of doubt, doubt. Yeah, over the foot injury. I can see Lockie Jones. He's built like a an outhouse in the. And then you've got Ch Charlie Dixon as well, who uh, who is. Um, no small man, I can give you the strong tip. So Woodcock <laughs> handballs the ball forward, gets it again in the one-two. Handballs over the top to no one in particular. Himmelberg Good cuts Himmelberg. it off for the Crows to Newchurch. Newchurch hands it over to the Adelaide Football Club, go forward again. But well done by Goldsack. Holds the ball up, short to lean it, and Port Adelaide can reload. Handball again to lean it. Leonard's had a lot of the footy in this game. Kick number eight. Pitches in front of that player over there in Wiedemann. Wiedemann tries to trap it, runs out of space. And there'll be a, a boundary thrown in front of the bowling club some 40 metres around from the Port Adelaide goal. The Crows leading by nine points, but your point about Connor Rosie, it's great to see that he's playing today and um, not too much doubt over that over that foot if he's playing today. And, um, and looking forward to a lot of the other younger Port Adelaide players in the second game, Miles Bergman, Lockie Jones. So Port Adelaide go forward, spoiled just in front of goal. We've seen that a lot today, Lee. Mm -hmm. That's... Um, Another behind for Port Adelaide. I reckon there's three or four that have been spoiled from the goal square. And they're one 8 14 Adelaide 3-4-22. Well, this is going to be hinge. Yeah, there's been, I reckon, at least four or five rush behinds today as the Crows bring it out. And it's a little bit sloppy. So Woodcock has a chance here to make them pay. Gives off the handball to Mays, who's had a couple of shots at goal himself. Frederick now just on the point of the 50, going one way, then the other. They're going backwards to go forwards here. Goldsack now grabs it. He just goes route one direct. A big pack forms. Ball over the back. Can someone crumb it? No, they can't. Strong tackle there from Wiedemann. No one able to get this football out. The umpire stalking blows the whistle finally and says, I'll have it. And we'll get a ball up about 30 metres out here from Port's goal. They'd like one. They've done a lot of attacking, but just haven't been able to convert. Rucks go at it. Ball comes to ground. Hinges in there again. And the Crows have the numbers around it. Berry throws it on the right boot, gets it up towards Newchurch and Frederick. Lenick goes in there. He's been busy. You've called that one Nords. Here's Frederick again. Ball spills out. Newchurch is in there. Lenick again throws it on the right boot. High up and under. Gets it inside 50. Himmelberg sets himself. Almost took the mark. Just quite couldn't. Now the ball spills out again. Good strong tackle there. That came from Boyle, who was the man that was tackled. Got the football away, though, so not holding the ball. Umpire blows the whistle and again says, I'll have it. About 40 metres out here from Port's goal. They trail by eight points. 17 minutes gone, second term. Well, look at that screen. A lot of players around the football. Lord tries to get the ball down to a Port Adelaide player's advantage. There'll be another ball up. You can expect that. These things happen a lot in modern football. 16, 17 players around the ball, and there'll be a secondary ball up. So... Umpire says, I'm going to backpedal this way, and you guys can go that way. Himmelberg gets it down towards uh, Crow's play. He stayed in the back. Umpire says, I will have it again. So a little bit of a stalemate at the moment, Lee. And, uh, and, and, and this can happen, of course, the modern game with so many players around the footy. Yeah, and also it's the first game of the season for these yeah. guys. Not so uh, very scrappy. Uh, you know, any footy in February is always a little bit... Um, you know, all over the place. So good for the guys to get the cobwebs out, and um, we'll see some we'll see improved showing uh, when they meet next week. But yeah, good to see, uh, good to see them persevering, and uh, let's hopefully uh, you know see the skills get a bit better in the second half. Of course, both these clubs meet again next week in in the main game in that Amy Community Series game down at Norlunga on March the seventh. So an unusual start of the times we live in at the moment um, with COVID. Uh, the AFL wanting to reduce uh, interstate travel through any risks of border closures, etc. So both of these teams, uh, from a senior perspective, will be playing again next week. So trying to get the ball free. Mays gets it for Port Adelaide. Underground handball finds Woodcock. Woodcock around the body. Who's there? Big pack of players. Serene had the ball punched away from him. Now the Crows can try and clear. Whoops, he slits a bit of Torval and Dean. Over the top goes that player in, I think it's Westbrook. Westbrook tries to get the ball free. One under the Crows. There goes Wiedemann around the body. That same scenario, the ball touched in the goal square and the Crows start to transfer the ball to the outer side. Now he's got a weight and prop. Woodcock breathing down his neck. Ball towards centre wing. Big pack of players. Garner takes the mark. Plays on. Gives it over the top there to the young player in Westbrook. And Westbrook, that is an absolute shank. And that goes out of bounds on the fall. And a relieving free kick to the Crows. Yeah, it's going to be Walton who takes it here, one of the top-up players. He goes in short, and that's going to be okay. 
And there's Pedler, who's been good today. Goes short. So just taking it easy here, the Crows. Just happy to chip the ball around. Ball now in board. Oh, nice mark taken. That was very, very nicely read there. And Jackson Mead. That was Jackson Mead. Yeah, really good. That was a nice little bit of play from him. They look to transfer again, but mm. a bit of an awkward turnover. Not the best there. Now the ball comes in board to Berry. Almost directly in the middle of the ground. He gives it off quickly. Long kick up inside 50. Phil Thorpe is there. Doesn't get there. Garner led him to the footy and doing some nice things. Garner, that was well played too by Hayes. It's a pretty average kick though to Phil Thorpe. Not giving yep. the big four much chance there. And here's Mead again. So a couple of nice little bits of play here from Jackson Mead, who's going to go short and the, as Port looked to transfer play. So the veteran Gold Sacks got it. Collingwood Premiership player way back in 2010, of course. Goes to Sutcliffe, who... Had a short career at the Fremantle Dockers as well. Has played some uh, senior football for Port Adelaide here in the AFL as well. And finds Woodcock, who, well, he'd, he'd, he's racking up getting the footy, Woodcock. He, he'd be up to, I think, you know, at least a dozen touches. Ball lays, oh, goes for again. a big grab. Ball's wrapped up and um, almost a carbon copy of the mark that he took some seven or eight minutes ago. He's so. just got some confidence though now, doesn't he? He's jumping at the football. Yeah, he's a great prospect, isn't he? I love that sort of aggression and really backing himself to uh, contest the mark. Mays, handballs out of traffic. The ball finds Frederick. Now, Frederick's got a clean pair of heels. Goes long towards half forward. Now, Wiedemann. Wiedemann's got arms pumping. Well done there by Schofield's got to try and meet the football. Oh, Wiedemann like cuts it. it off. That's brilliantly done. Goes in short. Geez, he did that really, really well. And finds Sam Mays just on the perimeter. He'll have to kick from around about 52 metres out. That was well played. He's close to best on ground at the moment, isn't he? Yeah. He's getting involved. Any, like, every time the port, um, port goes forward, he's the most dangerous um, player they have in their attacking half. So, <laughs> wow, he's really put on a show today. I don't think he's got the legs, mate. He's, he's, he's shaping up to go long, as, as you'd expect. I'm going to back him in, Norts. You're going to back him in? Port kid, I'm going to back him in. Okay. Legs of steel, he goes bang from 52, launches it and just tugs it slightly to the left, going for that extra distance. Distance, so, no problem, though. So Port Good Adelaide, call, one goal, nine. We had a Balfour's pie in that, didn't we, not? We did, yeah. we did. <laughs> <laughs> one, nine, 15, Port Adelaide. Adelaide 3-4-22, closing stages of the second quarter. I think we're playing 25-minute quarters here today, so about three minutes to go as Joshy Worrell plays on and then... Dumps it long, and now the Crows look going to go forward. They haven't done too much of that in this quarter, and kick comes forward. Not a great one for Sini, read it best, but didn't really give the leading Marshman. man there in Marshman much of a hope, and he's kick turned it straight here to Mead, and Mead now will come in board. He goes to Garner, who's a lovely left foot kick, and you see it there. Transfers play, so it comes to the fat side. Nicely done. Now the kick from Schofield. That's also okay, just... Working the ball around, Williams, who kicked that beautiful goal in the first quarter. He's going to put the ball inside 50 now, looking for a mark. Gets it to the, to the hot spot. No one able to take it. A couple of handballs. It was Strawn, who then got it out. Now Himmelberg on the run and takes it on the second attempt ahead of Westbrook. So well done there by Elliot Himmelberg. Oh. I don't know if that was the intended target there, but it's going to work out okay. Kick now over the top here, and Latchford takes the mark. Just on the defensive side of centre wing. He looks to go long. Phil Thorpe, let's have a look at him. Yeah, nicely done. Uncontested in the end. Goldsack running back with it. Phil Thorpe plays on quickly. Oh. It's going to be 50. And there's that rule again. I reckon that's probably the fourth one oh, we've had I, today. I reckon that's on the... Uh, that's, that's on Schofield. On Schofield, I think, for running through the... Yeah. Right. The encroachment area there, that's not on... Wasn't on Goldsack? Wasn't on Goldsack at that, that time, yeah. So, bit of bad luck there for Schofield. Just got a bit too close there. Well, we'll get a good look at Riley Philthorpe's setup here. He's kicking from about 35 metres out on a slight angle. We know he's got huge wraps on him. He was the number two pick. And Jamara Ugelhagen ended up, of course, going at number one. But Philthorpe, he's done a couple of nice things today. Should convert from here. He comes in. And he does put it through. Well done. The umpire did some work, but he's done enough. And he's kicked the Crows' fourth goal, the second for this term. And it's his second goal of the day also. So a nice return so far for the number two pick from last year's draft. And the Crows now open up a 13-point lead deep into this second term. All thanks to Balfour's. Lee Gaskin, Daniel Norton and Tom Wren with you here at Albert and Oval. Yeah, we've seen four 50-metre penalties today. I'll tell you what, the, the, the players have got a lot to think about, haven't they, at the moment? They've got that, obviously, new standing rule. You've got the encroachment zone that's yep. been in play for the last two or three years. It, it, it is a challenge. And especially for young players, you know, it's like Tars Schofield. It's going to take players like that a while to get used to it.
Indeed. The standing rule is going to be interesting. I've, I've heard a lot of people, uh, commentators alike, say, well, why don't you just go back two metres off the mark? Yep. And then, mm. But the rule is, and I've had to clarify, the rule is if you you can't retreat backwards either. When they when the umpire says stand, you have to remain is that right? standing. Okay. You can't move backwards, laterally or forward. Right. Ball goes forward. Should be a free kick there to, uh, to the Crows player. Um, who will take that free kick and ace Taylor. So Taylor by hand. Crow's got a little bit of run here. That ball was just going to pitch in front of Himmelberg. And uh, Lena just escorts it over the boundary line. In front of our broadcast area here at Albert and Oval, the magnificent Albert and Oval, Sun Drent. We're about 20 seconds short of half time. And the Crows, a handy lead, 13 points. Port Adelaide 1-9. And the Crows 4-4-28. So boundary throw in. They go again. Strawn gets it down. Picks up the handball as well, so well played. But Mays gets the ball for Port Adelaide. Goes forward, partially smothered off the foot. The, the, the foot. Wiedemann tries to get the handball free, and he doesn't. And Suckliff escorts it over the boundary line. And there is the siren to um, finish what's been a scrappy but entertaining first half of football. It's great to have football back. This is the um, non-selected game, of course. Port Adelaide hosting the Adelaide Crows, and the Crows... 13-point leaders at half-time, 28 to 15. Lee, a quick summary. Yeah, um, like you said, no, it's pretty scrappy there. 50-meter um, penalties have played a bit of a role. A couple of guys, the Thilthorpe is very handy. Uh, Wiedemann at Port Adelaide's looked really good, hasn't he? And I think Young Berry, like, very impressive for the midfield yeah. for the Crows. Um, the only concern, obviously, from an injury perspective, Ben Davis going off in that second quarter with what looks like a bit of an ankle or lower leg injury. Hasn't come back yet, has he, at this stage. He did end up walking off the ground on his own, but he was a little bit proppy, and you'd think, given it's only a trial game, he probably won't be back today. For those just tuning in, for the first time today. Goal kickers to half time. Riley Philthorpe has booted a couple. Lockie Gollant got the first one of the day. And James Borlase kicked a nice goal after getting a 50 metre penalty, but a really good intercept, uh, contested mark. And for the power, it was Dylan Williams who kicked a lovely goal on the left boot.